Well, here we are in the city of between, established 1908. It's in the middle of Atlanta and Athens, Georgia. I passed this sign all the time when I was going to the University of Georgia. I started out in medicine and I ended up in ministry. The question for you is, where is God calling you today? Maybe you find yourself in between. There's a story in the Bible in Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 40, of my favorite character. His name is Philip. And Philip is invited to go on his road in between Jerusalem and Gaza, and he has no idea why. But there he goes and he meets a man who is physically, socially, and spiritually in the gaps. And he shares the gospel of Jesus Christ with him. It all happened on the road in between. So the question is, where is God? I promise you, God lives right here in between. This is Tom Sykes for another Hush in the Rush moment on the road in between. Keep running through my head As I walk this road with nothing ahead The sun beams down on my face As I walk this road that leads to amazing grace Welcome into The Road In Between. We're so glad to be with you today. We're going to be taking a look at the story of Jesus' first time to go into the temple. He was a little bitty baby and Mary and Joseph brought him in to be presented to God, to be dedicated to God. And this is the story that takes place. It starts in the 22nd verse. Listen to this. When the time came for the pur purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord as it is written in the law of the Lord every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord and they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord and they couldn't afford a lamb because they were very poor so what did they bring they brought a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons and those pigeons were sacrificed for the life of Jesus Christ. 33 years later, Jesus would be sacrificed for you and for me. It's a, it's a very intimate story of a, a very poor peasant couple that comes walking in. And I'm sure that the priests had no idea who they were. But there was one particular person who had been waiting all of his life for this moment to happen. His name was Simeon. And Simeon was an older man, a righteous man. And listen to what happened. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. He was told uh, by a premonition that, that his life would not end before he would get to meet his God. How about that? Nobody wants to leave this world before they have a personal relationship with God as well. So Simeon, in a way, represents each of us. He was a very devout man, a very righteous man. He, he was in the temple. He, he was a person of faith. He, he knew the Torah. He was familiar with its practices. And in walks this couple. And when they walked in, I don't know what, what, uh, what gave him the signal, but he knew this was the moment he had been waiting for. And listen to what happened then. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God. Imagine that. Simeon, all of his life, had been waiting for this moment. And he was privileged to be more, maybe one of the early people in Jesus' life to be able to hold God. What an intimate experience. In this great, vast, big temple, 
Here was this stranger that was given the the permission to hold the Son of God, the Savior, the Anointed One, the Messiah, the Incarnation. And and Simeon got to take the, the baby from the arms of Mary and gently hold him to his chest. What a gift that is that Mary not only births Jesus, but she shares Jesus. And Mary and Joseph would be the the stewards of the Savior in order to share Christ with us. What a a great couple they are. So thankful. You know, Mary could have easily said, No, Simeon, I don't know you. You're not worried that I hold my baby. But she didn't do that. She presented Jesus to Simeon as well. And he held held baby Jesus. And when we come back, I'm going to give you an example of how I think that happened and how I think that's important for you and for me. Life is meant to be shared. Albert Einstein said, life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. A tandem bicycle, you don't see them very much, but it reminds us that we work together, the same direction, same rhythm. So who is behind you, helping to pedal with you so you can go faster and farther? These two sisters, Beth and Rachel, have been a team their whole lives. Who is with you, pedaling to your pace, helping you get where you want to go? This is Tom Sykes for another Hush in the Rush moment on the road in between. At Rick Justice Automotive, you'll find the right vehicle at just the right price. We have new inventory of late model, low mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs arriving every week. Come see us today and you'll see how we've been able to help your family and friends find the perfect vehicle. Financing in a 57 month, 57,000 mile warranty are available on every vehicle. For an awesome car buying experience, come to Rick Justice Automotive. We take pride in earning your business every day. Today's guest with us is Tony Pasco, a good friend of mine and also somebody really active in the community and in music and in life. Right. Tony, thank you for coming on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate We're it. We're glad you're here. So tell me, Tony, uh, what brought you here to Meridian, Mississippi? Uh, well, it's been a long journey as, as uh, you know, of course, anybody who has any kind of career or shooting for a career, in, in, especially in the arts, uh, and, and it's extremely difficult. But for myself, like I was saying before, you know, when you look back and you look at the road that you've traveled on, sometimes you do look back and go, wow, I'm so smart <laughs> for going left instead of going right. right. But at the time, you have absolutely no idea why you did that or that was going to benefit you in some way. And, and I guess, like we were talking about having faith. Yes. Um, you got to have faith knowing that you don't know why you're making that, that choice, but that down the line, down the road, that you will, it'll, everything will be okay and, and you'll be ahead of the game. And that's what happened for, for me. You know, I was born and raised in Chicago. My dad was a professional musician. Um, you know, my mom sang too. So I, I, I came from a, a musical family and, and growing up in, in the city. I was extremely blessed to, to be raised where I was because there was always so much music. I mean, Chicago has, of course, its right. history of, of music. but. Growing up and being a musician and having a father that was a musician, having that influence, of course, he was, you know, the biggest inspiration because he was right there. He was this tangible thing for me. Tony, tell me about uh, epilepsy. I know you had it as a child and how it affected you. Epilepsy, and I, was, I would have these seizures. And um, so my mom, you know, being the kind of person she is, mm-hmm. took me right into the hospital. We went and did all the tests, spent a year going through all the, 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 the therapy and all, you know, the medications and, and everything. Well, during that time, of course, it, be, when you're a kid and you're different mm. in any way, right? I, you get teased and you get made fun of and you get pushed off swing sets and not invited to birthday parties. And, and, and you know, I guess for my mom, when you're a little kid, you know, you can blow a lot of that off, but it's hard for a parent. I, and I see it more from her perspective now than I did of course when I was a kid so and and the type of epilepsy I have as I grew up grew older you know I grew past it Mm -hmm. and um you know and and then I moved about my life I went about you know I started playing guitar and but what we end up finding out because I had a musical family and I don't have any of course any medical um data to to, to back this up but I do strongly believe Hmm. that music Mm -hmm. um helps because when, when, when you lose that shortness of breath or you get anxious, that's how seizures come okay. a, about. You okay. know what I mean? When you're agitated or when, you know, so they always tell you to stop and breathe. And right. 
Well, music, when you play an instrument, you play guitar, your whole body has to be in that same rhythm that you're playing. So I think that helped me not have nearly as many seizures as I, as I could have had and stuff like that, because I, I played all the time. I just loved it that much, you know? So that was my best friend. That was my getaway. That was, you know, my kids are on video games. Right. This was my video game. So that's for me, that's, yeah. that's what I did. And I think that helped me mentally, you know, maybe it didn't do anything physically. I believe it did, but right. you know, you never know. You I never just know. think, yeah, it's just a theory I had. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names can never hurt me, but they do. Words off our tongue can help or hurt. Susan and Brenda are training their horses to accept the bits and bridles, and I wish we could too. If any think that they are religious but do not bridle their tongue, they deceive their hearts, and the religion is worthless. Though the bit of this bridle is so small, it has the power to turn a big horse around, and it can turn us around too. This is Tom Sykes and friends for another Hush in the Rush moment on the road in between. Vision, quality, experience. Glass Incorporated's expert glaziers can handle single window panes to entire high-rise buildings. Whether you need storefront windows, skylights, mirrors, or shower enclosures, no job is too big or too small. Glass Incorporated, your commercial and residential glass experts. Locations in Meridian, Orange Beach, and the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Make a wish. It's a special organization that grants wishes for children of special needs and their families. Inside this building right here are stories, of stories of people who have been before on special trips and those who are getting ready to go. And they combine on this evening to celebrate life and to celebrate hope. We look forward to sharing these stories with you right now with Make-A-Wish. We are right here for a Make-A-Wish celebration with Patricia Eichem, who is a mother of Ladarius, and they're getting ready to go on a special trip thanks to Make-A-Wish, and we are delighted to be with you today. Yes, Patricia. Sir. Yes, sir. And we would love to hear your story and what brought you and Make-A-Wish together. Well, actually, like I said, I was watching TV, and something came on about Make-A-Wish. So I Googled it and it said something about an application. So I said, apply. And I put in the application, sent it through. Within two weeks, they were contacting me, letting us know that we was approved for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Tell us about Ladarius. Ladarius is four years old now. He was born with, a brittle, with the brittle bone disease. He was born here in Meridian at Anderson Hospital. The pediatric pediatrician noticed something that wasn't right about. He's had three fractures in his legs and his soft spot ran from the front to the back of his head. Immediately within an hour and a half he was airlifted to Black Baxons in the NICU. He stayed there two weeks and we came home and we studied up on it and now he's doing wonderful. Because they said he probably would never, never, never be able to do anything and they're not saying that he will walk or he won't walk but I'm claiming that he's going to walk. Yes. So the plans are that Make-A-Wish has arranged for you to choose a wish that you'd like, and y'all have chosen what? Disney World. And we are going in November exactly when, but we're going to Disney World in November. And we're very, very excited about it. And he actually loves airplanes, and he's already told me when we're in back since we see him flying in, he said, Mama, I want to ride in the airplane. I said, baby, we can't ride an airplane, but this is all, his wish. God has granted him his wish all in one, to fly in an airplane and to go to Disney World. How about that? And you get to bring some of your family. Yes. Yes. All, well, the whole immediate family, the kids, my husband, my, kids, my two kids, and him and his brother. Well, from Decatur, Mississippi, all the way down to Orlando, Florida, God has been with you. Yes, he, and he's going to be with us. Yes, indeed. Well, it's a privilege to, to meet you and to get to know Ladarius. Yes. And to stay in touch with him and see where God has in store for him. Yes, sir. Indeed. Well, thank you for being on our show. Yes, sir. And well, y'all have a blessed day. Thank you. What a delight to welcome in Carmen and Camden Hardy. And they are here to celebrate Make-A-Wish. It's a big night, a send-off as you prepare to to uh, go on a, a special trip and we look forward to hearing your story. Mm -hmm. So Carmen, thank you for being with us okay. on the road in between. Mm -hmm. So share with us a little bit about Camden and about his story. Well, Camden was diagnosed with sickle cell disease, which is a red uh, blood cell disorder. Um, 
was diagnosed at two weeks old. Um, so we've been fighting for six years now. He turned six last week on the 31st. So we've been fighting with sickle cell for a while. Um, right now he's doing good. Um, he's getting chronic transfusions every four weeks. Um, trying to keep him out the hospital so he could live a life of a little boy and enjoy things as other kids, like other kids. So. Well, Make-A-Wish seems to be a big support for you. And they have recently just came into our lives. Um, and they are a big supporter, you know. I thank God for them every day since we met them because they are just so awesome. They go beyond their, you know, their duty, so they, they are awesome. Well, Camden, where are you going with Make-A-Wish? Disney World. <laughs> Disney World. What would you like to do? Well, I'm going to go swim and I'm going to see Mickey Mouse. You sure are going to see Mickey Mouse. And you're going to see a lot of other characters and they can't wait to see you. And your mama's so excited. She's as excited as you are. Well, when you get back from Disney World, you're going to have to come and tell us about what all you did, okay? Okay. Will you do that? You have to take a lot of pictures, Carmen. <laughs> I'll try to. I will. Very good. Well, thank you for being on the show with Road In Between. Thank you for having us. We're grateful. All right. Take care. Good job. We're here with Brenda Golish. Brenda, you are kind of the, the queen to me of Make-A-Wish. <laughs> and I want to thank you for letting us come into your place and, and sharing the stories of hope. And can you share with us a little bit about you and your story? Well, I actually got involved with Make-A-Wish probably about 15 years ago. I had got injured, um, a broken ankle, and some of my friends wanted, one especially, wanted to get me out of the house. And she said, the only thing is, I'd like for you to go to this Make-A-Wish meeting with me, and then we'll go shopping, we'll go out to eat and everything. So I went to that meeting with her. I'd never heard of Make-A-Wish, to be honest, before that day. And I had had a child that had toxic plasmosis. And I remembered that feeling of, you know, not knowing. I couldn't sleep. I was scared if I went to sleep, I might miss a cure. Mm -hmm. I might miss, you know, um, of somewhere to go. And we were traveling too with her. So all this resonated with me that night. And um, the group just happened to be having a wish granters training that night. How about that? So I continued on go into the meetings and everything, and just got more and more involved. But nothing stole my heart, like when I was trained and I went out to do that first wish. Mm -hmm. That very first wish child uh, had chronic diabetes. He was maybe, maybe five or six years old. And um, couldn't talk very well, but he wanted to see Blue Clues. He wanted mm -hmm. to see um, Shrek. And so we knew the only way that he would be able to see that would be to go to Disney World. And um, so we did. We, we got that squared away. And that was my very first wish child. And very shortly when he came back, um, he passed. Mm -hmm. And um, when we went to the wake and everything, the family was coming up to us and just thanking us for those memories and just like, just so much gratitude. Yeah. And I realized then that that joy, those memories and stuff, that he was happy. Yes. Now that's the only one that, you know, I've ever lost that I uh, worked with. But I realized that it brings joy and hope during a time of such sorrow. Thank you. Well, how can people get involved with Make-A-Wish? Is there a, a website or um, a place you can They go? can go to uh, Make-A-Wish of Mississippi. Our home office is in Jackson. Now, we actually meet, if they're in the Meridian area or surrounding area, we meet at um, Lauderdale County Farm Bureau, Highway 39, the first Thursday of each month at noon. We have a working lunch, okay. and that's where we report the wishes that we're working on. We will talk about fundraisers and how they can get them. There is something that everybody can do. Good. There is something. What about Hattiesburg area? Are you familiar um, with? I'm not sure if they have a, a group that meets like we do. I know they had one until Katrina came through. Okay. 
on the um, Gulf Coast. Now, I'm not sure if they've built that back up or not. Okay. But um, they have several different areas. But if they check with the home office, they'll let them know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, thank you for your love. And you pour out that love. Oh, it's a wonderful job. I tell anybody, it's the best job you can have. <laughs> it's a volunteering job, but it's the best job anybody can have. Absolutely. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. What does that mean today? Well, I think it means taking the bread that we get at the communion table and then sharing it with those who are outside of the church. And that's what Rick Murray and I are doing here at NOLA Mission down in New Orleans, Louisiana on St. Charles Avenue. This church offers ministry for the homeless as well as for the needy. And we've got sandwiches here we do every week for the homeless down in New Orleans, especially under the bridges, those at the Ozanam Inn over there at Camp Street and on the streetcar routes. And I think that's where people experience Jesus Christ. A lot of people will never come into a sanctuary, but if we can bring Jesus Christ out to them, that's what the church is all about. So I want to ask you about your church. What's your church doing out in the community? How are you serving the homeless, the needy, and those who might be less fortunate than you? Jesus says, I am the bread of life. This is Tom Sykes for a Hush and the Rush Moment in New Orleans, Louisiana. At Rick Justice Automotive, you'll find the right vehicle at just the right price. We have new inventory of late model, low mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs arriving every week. Come see us today and you'll see how we've been able to help your family and friends find the perfect vehicle. Financing in a 57 month, 57,000 mile warranty are available on every vehicle. For an awesome car buying experience, come to Rick Justice Automotive. We take pride in earning your business every day. So how do you picture Simeon holding baby Jesus? Do you picture him like a sack of potatoes? I don't think so at all, do you? No, it was a very tender moment and he took that baby and I think he took that baby like a loaf of bread. And a loaf of bread is to be held tender and gently and you're very protective of it. You don't squish it. And when you buy it and you put it into, into your buggy, you get ready to take the shopping cart out, you make sure you don't put anything on top of it. And when you put the, the bread back into your car, you make sure that nothing interferes with the shape of the loaf of bread. Why? Because it's special. When Jesus came into the world, He said, I am the bread of life. Come unto me. Anyone's welcome to come to me and you will never be hungry. That's from John 6, verse 35. I am the bread of life. And so imagine Simeon holding a baby who was born in Bethlehem, which means house of bread. And now in Jerusalem, he gets the privilege of holding the bread of life. And his life would be complete. He said, now my life can end because I have been able to see my own Messiah. I don't want you to leave this planet without meeting your Messiah. I don't want you to leave this old world wondering where God is. God is around you. He loves you. He cares for you. And Mary today is presenting her child to you to say, say, here he is. You get to hold him. And as you bring him into your life, this is what I'd like you to also think about. As this is like a loaf of bread, a lot of times when we play football and we start playing football and someone hands us a ball, the tendency is to begin by holding it like a loaf of bread. But there are times in our life, as tender as God is, there's also an enemy out there that wants to take that gift that God has given us away. And they begin to try to fight for that, for that gift and try to remove it from us. And so they start snatching it and pulling our arms down and trying to rip that football away from us, the football of faith. And so we got to hold on to it really tight. You see, when Simeon was holding that baby, that baby was gentle, but I guarantee you that Simeon made sure that he wasn't going to lose Jesus Christ. And I don't want you to lose Jesus Christ either. I want you to hold Christ and don't let anyone take your faith away from you. Don't let this old world get a hold of you and try to rip him away. I want you to remember the Sabbath. Keep it holy. Sunday's not a second Saturday. you got to set aside certain time. Turn off technology. And as you do that, what you're saying is, hey, my faith matters and nothing's going to interfere with it. Because when you lose it, when you fumble it, you feel terribly about that. you got to go to the bench 
Maybe you don't get brought back into the game. Maybe you fumbled your, your faith life and you're struggling to regain it. I want you to know that God will give you the ball again. And He'll say, here I am. Here's my child. Take him again. So you take the bread of life again. And this time, you're not going to let anything remove the hope that you have in God away from you. Don't let disease do it. Don't let divorce. Don't let disarray or disappointment or depression or any of those D words get you down. Hold on to that faith. The good news is that Simeon did just that and his life was complete. I want to ask you this question. As you, as you go through your life, are you hungering right now? Uh, you, you might be full on the outside. You might look like you've got it all going and nobody knows that on the inside you're kind of empty. Maybe there's a gnawing going on in the insides of your stomach right now. You're, you're struggling to, to find peace. It's just gnawing at you. Something in your life isn't right. Would you like to have that complete? Would you like to be, be full of God's love? You see, God doesn't want to just give us a little piece of bread and say, here it is. God says, here, take the whole loaf. Because the grace of God comes in the grain of God. And at the, at the Last Supper, he took, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Eat of it in remembrance of me. In other words, he says, let me come into your, your, your life. Let me come into your system. And then he took, a, took a, a chalice and he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. In front of this table, it says, do this in remembrance of me. Remember, remember you're special and remember that God is special and that Christ's son has come into the world to, to bring you life. And bread truly is the staple of life. There are a lot of other things that you can eat, but you need the basics of life, and that is, includes the bread. And so Jesus says, you know what? I'm going to use that image. I am the bread of life. And then at the end of his life, he returned to that, and he broke it. And that's good news for us, that if your life is, is not whole right now, it's probably broken. And God takes the bro broken pieces, and he dips it into his blood, and he says, eat of it, drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. It's a, it's a real fascinating story today. But it begins as Mary and Joseph come into the temple and they share the greatest gift that they have. So, what are you going to do with this text today? Uh, who's trying to take God out of your life? Don't let anyone take God out of your life. The church is here to help each other so that we might stay in the faith, so that we might uh, be able to hold on to the greatest gift of God. So as you go forth from here, know that God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for you. We go nowhere by accident. Wherever we go, God is sending us. God has a purpose in our being there, and He's given His Holy Spirit to us. Until next time, thank you for watching Road in Between, and may you be sent with God's gift, Jesus Christ.